of AI systems making decisions about who lives and dies completely changes the entire frameworks on which we base war. As AI redefines our world, AI, AI, artificial intelligence, a new type of warfare is emerging and we're seeing it take shape on the battlefields of Ukraine. With superpowers battling for AI supremacy, many experts fear we're hurtling towards an unstoppable arms race. The worst case scenario is that warfare is accelerated to a point where nobody can control what is going on. Is it too late to rein in the rise of artificial intelligence? Intelligence, I wanted to set the scene with these two videos that shows two different aspects of uh, artificial intelligence that are currently debated. The first one that you see, the beautiful one, has been uh, published at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. It's called Unsupervised. What is it? Uh, they've digitized the collection, at least part of the collection of the Museum of Modern Art, and then they deployed algorithm to produce art on top of the art that has been digitized. And uh, whoever has been there, it's quite fascinating, and uh, I let you judge if it's art or not art, because it's produced by artificial intelligence, but it's nevertheless beautiful. The second is, Another aspect of the deployment of artificial intelligence, you've, saw, you, you've seen two things in uh, this video, the second video. Uh, one is how you use artificial intelligence to plan the deployment of troops, notably using machine learning to see the patterns of your enemy and the patterns of your own troop. And the second element that you've seen at the end, where you have the swarm of drones, is how you can automate the deployment, because uh, you can easily imagine there are no control towers to manage a swarm of uh, drones. Uh, you, they are just autonomous, and they have peer-to-peer -peer, uh, relationship. And uh, that's the, 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 the context in which we evolve in artificial intelligence, as every time there is a breakthrough in technology, there is this discussion about the utopian or dystopian perspective of technology. And the answer it will be about will it save or destroy the world, and the answer is neither nor. And uh, for a simple reason that technology, ultimately, it's a machine, and a machine produces tasks, and human beings are normally more than a collection of tasks. And uh, that's, that's the, why these debates always appear, but always come to the same conclusion. Uh, on a broader scale, this has been approached by uh, Professor Carlotta Perez. She's an economist, British Venezuelan, and she has uh, worked in extensively on the cycles in technology, and you see uh, patterns with the usual expansion and contraction. And it has started long time ago, more recently with the steam machine, up to the microprocessor, and what we are just seeing with artificial intelligence right now. Just to contextualize and say this is an important uh, breakthrough, no doubt about it, but no different, in my view, than the previous breakthrough we've seen in technology, and uh, we will have to uh, approach it uh, uh, in a meaningful way. To do this on the panel today, I'm very pleased to find old colleagues, <laughs> new colleagues, uh, on the panel. I will start uh, with uh, Professor Daniel Handler. He's a member of the Academy des Sciences Morales et Politiques, and he has just published a book called Intelligence Artificielle, Intelligence Humaine, La Double uh, Enigme. Uh, I can only recommend, of course, the reading of this book in best libraries, including online, available. And uh, Daniel will set the context. I think artificial intelligence is complex. There are different types of artificial intelligence, and uh, Daniel will showcase this. Then we will move with uh, Professor Kazuko Suzuki. He is uh, at the University of Tokyo and director of the Institute of Geoeconomics uh, as well, and he will cover uh, the state of the policies regarding artificial intelligence. Then we are joined by uh, Associate Professor Amina uh, al Sumaiti. Uh, she's uh, in the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science of the Khalifa University, and she will present us what she's working with the team about applying uh, artificial intelligence, notably 
in uh, transport system or smart cities, which is the focus of a, of a work. Then to make the connection with uh, topics we have discussed in technology before at the World Policy Conference, uh, Toby Simon, who is the founder of Synergia, a think tank and incubator based out of Bangalore, active in the Trilateral Commission, will cover the cybersecurity aspect of uh, AI. You have artificial intelligence for cybersecurity and the data protection, notably uh, in artificial intelligence. That's what he will cover. And lastly, I thought it would be of interest to think, oh, you are, we have artificial intelligence as we know it, or as you will discover it today, uh, but then there will be the turbo-charged artificial intelligence once we can uh, deploy quantum technology, and that's what uh, François Barrault, entrepreneur well-known from the team here and the World Policy Conference, uh, chairman of the uh, DG World Institute and also a board member of Sandbox, uh, and he will tell us about his experience uh, in uh, quantum technology and how it will accelerate uh, even further the deployment of artificial intelligence. So. Thank you.